All right, so last time we decided to work on the UI. This time we're actually going to work on a little bit of programming and finalizing that UI so it's ready to go. Have the elements kind of set it up for it good here. So I'm going to go ahead and load the application. Today's objective will mainly be the following. So the template code is amazing. <clears throat> the purpose of this is probably going to be to have some sort of upload and download operation commenced by the end of this video, as well as a registration of the file in the real-time database of Firebase. We might also pair that with some sort of membership set because we want to eventually enable permissions so that you have a free versus paid but we'll see how it goes first. So, let's go ahead and open the application and get ourselves to work. Anime is one of my favorite packages mainly because it's able to do the drawing of whatever you make in registration of objects all in one versus seeing something just specifically in them to just flash develop where it's just like you have to program it, draw it, or load elements and assets, which I suppose isn't bad when you do styling of the sort, but I, I prefer doing this at the time. You can excuse this, I was trying to test permissions when it came to certain file types. So let me do a clean up here. Touch input mode is to enable touch point references, but we're not using that for a desktop version, so we need to disable that at the moment. And we'll add detection later, because we're going to want to build around for Android, iOS, and desktop, and the goal is to use the same exact code as it would be for all of them. That's why we're going to primarily see to rest versus using the SDKs provided by district. Yes, yes. All right, so these are going to be my action elements. We cited that last video where we're going to make these kind of fly in and fly out. So these need to be go ahead and registered as actual elements. So I'm going to take this F8 to export for active script, and I'm making sort of an elements folder so I can make sure everything's a bit more organized. I like to keep my UI scenes and everything else in its own kind of package. Add a new class. What we would call this, considering it's a button that goes in and out, an action option, template layer. We want to generalize as much as we can. Then we we'll parent it in the first place. I suppose that we're going to have this be something that just kind of runs in and out and has a possible action towards it. So I'll set it to something like. Uh, Text action. Give my own custom name there. Extend the movie clip. There. Now this text action is going to have a text field. So we're going to want some sort of structure which is what this text is going to be or defined here. So we'll just have that instruction set. And the text is already defined in the movie clip itself. And Flash, so Excuse me one moment. And we got a new keyboard. This thing's kind of wearing down on me a bit. We use a lot of uh, I probably should get clean to be honest. I don't know what this freaking stuff is. Anyway, text underscore. Oh boy, there you go. TXT. Dot text is going to equal to obviously the text. Now that's not all we're going to do here, so stand by on this. I want to make sure I'm kind of having a certain order to it. So we're going to have this as text action, and we're going to have this located at, what do you call it, UI.elements.
Let's see if it finds it. I need a source path to it. Okay, cool. It's found. So, now we got field. We'll have a transparent background in there. We'll have a dynamic text field named text underscore txt. We're going to make sure the font is embedded so it's working for a case lowercase through punctuation. Don't really need anything else because we're kind of mainly doing in English. However, later in the future, we may want to import these for other languages. So I'll kind of make note of this and go from there. English. That will be our dynamic text field. Make sure it's single line, not selectable. Now we're going to want to do something here so that when the user actually taps on the object, they don't end up selecting the text field and the text field is waiting for action but nothing's found to it so nothing happens when we tap on it. So we're going to do something like uh, mouse children equals false. That way it doesn't have to pay attention to anything inside of the object and just use the object itself when we add event listers to it in the future. Now these are obviously going to be rendered, so I'm not going to leave this here in the end, but for now I'm going to kind of keep it here. Remember the position of it is something we're going to show when it's sending this and have it in the right position. Uh, we are going to then specify our file elements, or display elements. Now I did notice that in here, the line, the hairline does not show at the end. But we move from pixel to right, we're good. So I want to make it so that maybe these are, oh man, that's going to be tough because these are hairline instances and the stage can be 480, but that wouldn't be the entire case scenario, but they want to be one third. Hmm. One third minus one. It's going to be equal to Technically, something that probably shouldn't be when the time goes because that's what it is. Uh, I'll hold on for that for now because that can I guess in positioning of elements. So I'm just going to specify the element and be good there. So right here we have the file name, we have the text field, which is text on the txt, and overall we're going to make it so that it kind of if it's a picture or a video, we're going to have uh, an icon of it overlap everything here so in any case you'll just see that element so we already have it set to a file preview element but we're still going to export for extra scripts and we're going to make it its own class as well i'm then going to again have it set for a instance of movie clip because it is currently a movie clip which is display object and again, since we're not accessing anything inside the element, we're going to do mouse children make this false. Now the next part of this is going to be specified for IDE to recognize. And we're going to, to I believe it was UI.elements.filePreview. That would be correct. Wait, wait. Not in fact. Preview. I've spelled preview wrong. Oh my. Your rename going here real quick because I want things that are right. Oh, did you do it magic? Nice, okay. Now I check for it. Oh, gosh. So let's see if we check it again. That's renamed successfully. Let's set that. And let's go to file preview. Check for it. Oh, cool. We found it already. So that's good. Alright. So these are elements going to be rendered automatically in this scene, and we're going to have it positioned right under this header here. And inside the header itself, we're going to make sure we're registering these objects, which are the mini button, which brings up many actions, as well as the add button, which can be an action panel. That displays the dialog stating or inside, we're going to get those text elements that go something like add a new photo, or take a photo, or add a new folder, or various other additional actions. So, first, Break this into this bitmap form again. 
Let's see if we have a menu icon. Nothing special about it, so we don't have to export it for anything. At this time. I might want to have this set for an icon class later, so maybe it fades in or something. But I'll just kind of leave that for now. So, menu, I'm scroll C. And we're gonna this in this bitmap again to add icon. Check it in and plus icon. Whatever. Add and go ahead and see. And here we're actually this is for decoration purposes, but we're gonna want a text field so people can eventually search for their files and folders and everything else in the current directory. So I'm gonna to want to make an input text field, and I was gonna go ahead and get this because I don't remember what, what file name, what a um, what font it was. So there's some sort of consistency going on. Make it an input text field, single line, and we're gonna have it so that it's a little bit bigger, and so it kind of makes it fit in the menu right. Should be on the left. Oh, that looks weird. Then again, text always from the center does look kind of weird and spots and like that. Now I'm going to bring up the cube. Yeah, but I do wonder. Yeah, I'll keep it like that for now because I kind of want to be on the left there. Not sure about how that will be finally, however. That's fine with this. Do want to keep the italic reference because we do like that. This can be search. So we'll call upon those later. Now, whether or not we should keep these in is another story, but that'll be fine. Now, these icons here are going to be actionable to this whatever we'll spot them. In all technicalities, it's just a file preview element, but bigger. But we don't know the exact dimensions of file size or sorry the display size of it. So for instance, if it's a I mean the images you take are the portrait landscapes, so they're not gonna be scored like this in the first place. So we're we're trying to kind of get the full screen image up so that the user doesn't have to download it to see the entire thing. So we might want to make this its own action element when it loads a full version of it versus the icon version of it. And then from there have it fit the portrait or landscape image inside of it properly after doing some positioning adjustments. So the best way to go about this, maybe a tap on full screen as well wouldn't be too bad if that's an easy draw. What I am worried about, however, is I suppose if the portrait element decides to do that, we'll check on some other foot. Better line instance to make sure it's safe. This doesn't speak in the street. 100%. Yeah, Doesn't look the best. Alright, I have decided. So if it's an image, I'll just have it fill up the entire area. So it's just a file, I'll kind of have this bar at the end here, just kind of divvy up these and go from there. Maybe somewhere in the future I'll have some sort of like data about the files, for instance, file size, last used, kind of like highlighted in the back. But for now, I'm gonna have it like that. Maybe that location wouldn't be too bad considering the transfer is going to be back and forth. But the goal is pre accessible and not to worry about that, so that's going to be fine. Uh, okay, I've decided. So let's go ahead and select everything here. And we're going to have the preview versus. 
exploded. While display. There we go. Name is zoom are important. Now you go ahead and take like 30 seconds to name it, right? Alright, so this is again going to be a new class that extends a music clip. Save that here. Now, okay, there's not going to be anything inside of it again, so we're going to do mouse children. False. And I'm, even though these are currently consistent, we're going to do a lot more in the future. I could make obviously under another just under a word extend something that you know be bookable element and all that, but we're gonna have it be separate this time because we're gonna do quite the different things. I just not sure if you can want to have the complicated things because they will aren't technically supposed to be the same thing. So file display is going to be its own action here. And we're gonna have it again go from UI.elements.file display. And you are not found. I might have to create the package name later considering the fact that it's thinking it's from source, but alright, let's go ahead and load the catch again. Yep, that was fine. Okay, cool. So, this element won't be here at the end. Honestly, this song is annoying. Okay, great. Now, this is interesting because honestly, this is going to be good the entire time, but we do want it so that it has its own actions. But, we're worried about it because. It sort of has I'm not gonna replicate this at all, or at least so we don't have to class. I'll worry about that later. When it comes to that, there's not a lot of planning going this initially, so that might be a thing. But given my habits, I think I kind of fit in properly, as well as the growth in the future for it. Anyway, icon here is going to be our download element. So let's go ahead and download icon. Download underscore MC. We actually might want to make these simple buttons in the future to do with a type button. And we're going to do download icon. Download button. Anyway, it's going to be really important, but we want to ensure it's recognizable. Four states of a button up, over, down, and hit. Right now, it's at about what is that? 75% transparency. So maybe when the user hovers over it, we'll have it at. Full set transparent, uh, full set, and maybe a bit of a glow. I should add. Something to when the U goes down on it, we're gonna maybe want to dampen it. Oops. Six is going to be the one that lets us kind of transfer over. So this is set to oh, it's a group. Okay. So this is set to 100%. We're going to want to make this so when the user hits it, we're already at 100%. So I'm just going to dull it down to 50% to kind of notate an action hit. Hit area is going to be everywhere inside of this. This does not get spiked user, it's just a general set. So up, over, down. Setting five, one hundred fifty in the giant box. Easy enough, right? 
name this its own set, which is going to be download underscore etn. Hopefully, identify and code editors that recognize the underscore etn part. So that's this button. <clears throat> Do wonder if the button works in Android. That's study. Same thing with the deletes, where we're going to prompt the user when this happens so they want to delete whatever files being displayed. Make it user to selection, but that's another thing. This idea of the same. So, delete button. Do that selecting. Go inside of it by double clicking it. Hover over. Sets F6 to make another frame that's Control B to break it into a bitmap. 100% alpha on the white color. Down. 50% alpha on the white color. Hit that giant square box to indicate the hit area. These lines actually react as their own hit area too, so if the user hovers here, they get it. If they hover outside, they won't. So we're going to face in this circle scheme of things a lot better, but not too worried about that. This breakpoint isn't going to properly, but we've seen, so it's good. Last is a share reference, which is going to be a reference to generate a Telashi the database to allow access to this file from whatever link or whoever and provide the user with a link on click or on, I guess, save versus the keyboard if we have permission of that, or just going to display it. But anyway, break it into a bitmap, share button, up. Over is going to be set reference for 100%. And we are using fill color, so I'm going to sure do that there too. Good there. Down is going to be 50% alpha, 50% fill alpha. Area is just going to take everything. Just draw a screw in a little bit last time. Good. And this can be share and score BT. Oh, and this was going to be delete and score BT. Always good to double check things. We honestly couldn't make a class that identifies all of our buttons and does hover hours, but I want to make sure some of these do different things. Uh, I'm going to fix it up later. Hover over mechanic. Well, actually, no, it needs to fix up now because it hit mechanic port. Alright, so. Break this, destroy the add I, I icon, and doesn't destroy it from the stage, so we're good. Ooh, a little crazy there. Relieve we'll your under it, so. So we get back. Uh, Shift to deselect the uh, object behind it. F8. Add button. And then the export. Set for here. F6 to make new. Let's draw out set to. You got a percent outline. Now you got 100% highlights. I'm going to set you to 50 hits. And your hit area is actually going to be this entire area. So from 0 to length. OCD enough to set it from 0 0.4 and 0 0.2 to 0, 0. Points for that. And, oh, 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 mistake. Control Z. Let me get the square. Nope, I'm going back. So there's a square. Alright. Now F6, not F5, do that. Hover over that entire icon there. 0 0.2 and 0 0.5 to 0, 0, so it's perfect and it's good to go. Next step is going to be 
this instance. So it's a menu icon. Oh. Destroy it. Select it all, just like that. The menu button. And again, this is a bit repetitive, but it's gonna how it's gonna be at the moment. Over, it's going to be hit like that. We'll set it to let me see. Let's see. What's that? I'll fix you. Um we'll see how that goes. Let's set to that open. Let's see what's there. So it's in from set? Yep, cool. Up over hundred down a gradient of fifty to white. It is gonna be this entire area. Great enough. Awesome. So our buttons are sort of set. We have this instance. Maybe we should make a set. This is no, no, no. This is animation and references, so I don't do that. All right. Set to go here. See how it looks in the moment. There's no changes whatsoever. Source UI elements, of course, is the project. I recognize the fact that it's here. So, here's what I'm going to do. Close that U. I'm going to move you up to the parent directly. Just for reference, sort of delay. Documents, GitHub, project storage. Here we go. And do source document. Source dots. That have been set. Set main column one. Document class set. Type of source. Oh, the possibility of underlying method add frame scripts. Oh. Bait, it's not defined. Alright, and finally. So these are elements here. I move the frame skirts over one, so we're targeting these. Get a nice glow on the set here, and when you tap it or click on it, it goes down. Same with the area. Area is defined properly so it's not too inconvenient for the user. And one more. Same thing, share button's kind of fine, right? The button's okay. And the download button's good to go. And our existing elements are just fine here. I'm gonna make it so that this actually deletes anything more than this plates, but I have to do that programmatically. So we'll do that in a second. did not embed the font. Okay, done. Let's go back 
to you one more time. You don't want to bet the fun, it only takes you just a sec, but never good. Alright, so I have our set references, and I believe now it's time to make a bit of action. Where did it begin here? But forewarning, I do get a little bit messy when it goes to a little bit of my organization of architecture. When I'm just, you know, going at it from square one. But it's okay. The raw dog is away. This is not necessary. This is not necessary to be on stage because we have you set. You are not necessary. In the view. We stay. And I believe that believe that's okay. good. What's our construction set to far display the order of things according to my memory? Be able to talk to you from sort of some parent objects. We'll see how it goes. All right. Now the goal is going to be to the last time I had my architecture set, I had it so that each and every single frame has a little corresponding move with that kit. Kind of set like that back in, but I don't want to do it like that this time. I want to make so that the the UI icon references are itself, and there's sort of an engine behind it, which is accessing and processing data and downloading, uploading, and just tell the UI display something. So, in a sense. We're gonna have a login script, or sorry, a login manager that handles the token authentication, which is actually in itself just fine. There's a way to manage that though. We're gonna have a service that uploads and downloads, scans for files, and display, tells whatever display and finds files. We kind of want to have a mindset of like we're, we're building a sort of command line set first, so that it can be displayed in some sort of like uh, text or plain form. And then from there, we're going to have it so that if it's finds something instead of outputting in text, of course, we're going to have it talk to the UI to display something. So, let's work our way down. So, I do have that Firebase script, script already ready to go from my flash project. Now, we want to make it so that on initialization, it shows a login to sign up. And I want to sort of set system to it. Just essentially a registration UI manager, and then ooh, how do I want to properly format systems architecture software system architecture software tax, but no, no. I want to set as fast as possible. I want to make sure I have a growth set. Mm. A login set reference. Login's cool. Uh, where I'm busy with the number. I want to. Let's go. Let's um. Let's do this. Gonna be sort of like an app save things. So it's gonna have to get somewhere in order to get somewhere you have to unlock things, which is essentially login. Oh man, this is actually a bit tough. I don't know why I don't want to make it a different way, but I don't want to make it too complicated. How's it going?
Right. Um. If I can imagine as actors, puppeteer references. This is one thing you just tell us to do something and it happens, but I want to put it in some kind of set area. Okay, I have an idea. Main script control is goes in the stage based on states. Then subscripts would be like displayable menu. Yeah, displayable action. Display and file display and file preview. So let's make something called scenes. I want to go to call it action select to be a movie clip. And this job will just be played on a bunch of actions. Don't tap. It has a lot of order for it. It's really abstract. I don't think this is necessary given the circumstances. Hmm. Yes, it is. Because we have to do that. Okay, so. You're fine as it is. Where is my scrolling script? Let's open a project that is called Newsbank. And let's go into our main file, which is a super easy set. Constructor. This is my previous project, Newsbank. You know those. Um, we need to. Believe it's. It should be inside the main file itself. There's a scroller reference. I just oh, because I, I did the reformatting in that. Alright, alright, cool. So not to make this too complicated, I should know this. Source elements. Non-function definitions. This article itself. What? Alright, let's do this. Use display. There we go. This is something that I need. So, inside of this, we do a bunch of articles and decide to be like, okay, yeah, make a scroller and you're good to go, query and all that. However, I just want to scroll content reference. So this is going to be, I'm going to just display a bunch, make a scroll up for it, get tight the bounds, and be good. I need to save this. Caches. It's interesting, this has not been going to be used with this. Huh. Just decided to go away. 
Interesting. What did I do? You're acting funny today. So, Whatever is talking to this, be it the background service or whatever, is going to decide to display a bunch of actions. Since a bunch of, you know, general set of strings, put some of the stage in this properly formatted area, and return it back to allow for event listeners to be added by the service. Now, I need some more music. All right, so we are going to make it so that wherever you are, you have access to the stage. Okay, so take that very good. Make a private walk stage, this that stage go stage. And then we're gonna be like, uh, oh, we need our short content. Good one. Not for those at this time. And text messages should not be coming in during my live streams. That'd be bad and unprofessional. Anyway, scroller content reference. She have normal to do that at 329 in the morning. Stage, 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 display actions, display actions, oh shit. Make sure you have my hangouts disabled.
nothing comes through as I'm doing messages on the side. I believe it's disabled. You're not quote me on this, and I apologize if it's not. Ew, that's kind of weird. Ah, excuse that. Let's see if I can turn that off somehow. It's kind of weird it just pops up like that. Anyway, stage stage reference. Referenceable actions. I believe I need to make it so that's right. Where was I? Displayable actions, actions, vector string, vector text action, vector text action. It's going to be a reference to this. Actions to vector to string. Pardon me. Vector text action. Actions vector. So realistically, we just need to make it so that. So not an emergency situation. So actions, vector string, and vector text action is going to be taking in a bunch of strings, putting in a bunch of that, and we need to make it so that we're having the scroll R initialized. So where is my scroll error? Source element, file display, constructor, main. Spank bubble, I believe I just had it somewhere. Ah, scroll to Okay, so this is what we need. Uh, I need to put this in this project here. Yeah, we're good. Split actions, actions, vector, equals vector that. So, we need to do our... In any case, this is going to be a scroll element. And just for context, scroll element is something that is made that I kind of put it over do it flash. Let me just add zero of of items and it automatically calculates the number of items removed, positioning, spacing, and all that fun stuff. So it's it's a very useful thing. Now, um, un I don't have this dynamic enough, so that's not just for mobiles. Let's go and sit for math and free trip, huh? Oh, man. Hmm. I wonder if I could just change those to mouse and red. Mouse begin, mouse move. And scroll. Oh, no, no, no. Um. What is. Uh, what's the project that I did that with? I don't have access to that. Somewhere inside of... GitHub.
I just do a flash stuff. Tills, where are you? There we are. Desktop scroller. Sample source. Calm, do it flash. Events, you know, constants. Tills, scroll. Reg simple scroll, I believe. And our example for that was inside of older projects. Uh, where am I using Reg simple scroll? Oh man! Alright, let's just take the sample. It's been a while since I've done that. There we go. So it's a matter of making a new object, adding it, staying in position, doing its mass quest set reference, custom possible glow filters. All right, simple enough. Uh, now I do want to make it so that it's compatible with that mobile. So as I'm making this action of full select reference, I need to identify what we're working with here. I believe to figure that out, we're doing trying to access capabilities. Let's want to. Determine the operating system. Let me just look this up to be sure. for Android. See. Version substring. Okay, so yeah, it is listed in oh version substring. Oh Alright, so we're going to use detection for WinMac and Linux. I'm determined that's the end thing. Wait, do not determine operating system. Alright, well, yeah, you're right. Okay, so touch enable, let's do that. So realistically, we need to make it so that if it's a test screen, we can do it and just, you know, let them use that. Or well, it's not. Which, I mean, in a small scenario, it determines, like, if the user is using a touch screen monitor, then it's like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> you can only interact with that, but it might work for mouse too, so let's check on that. Get texting and reports for it. But, it's a small subset of audiences. So... Capabilities, touch screen type. Everett. Alright. 
capabilities structuring type is what well, that's, that's useless contents finger and none stylus okay right, so we need to determine if it has a touch screen, which drives down everything else. So, Desktop sample source. So if the capability is dot touch screen type equals Actually, if you'll excuse me again for one second, I have to go to the restroom. It's only one way.
All right, apologies as I was watching, doing that while watching a few second cooking. Great channel. Anyway, touch screen type. You never get that exact definition. Internal definition. None. Break Skipple Scroller, you don't have a. Okay, hold on. I should make the scroller here. Because the container, yes. So my application is to make so that this will all work as such. I'm pretty tired, so I'm going to stop in this case at 4 a.m. But, you can make it so that the scroller decides to be a dynamic. And let me see if I can actually find the scroll I was talking about. I should know. There. Excuse the French. Scroll its content, the scroller, news, display. Oh, where were we? Action slice. They both have a bit of the same protocol, but. Essentially, the same thing. Realistically, I could have all these properties and use them, but I'm not going to really use any of these except for the mask width, mask height. And we want to, these are defined, I think, as same variable. Different variable in it. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Simple enough. Talking to it and it'll be good. 
So if it's a finger or a stylus, to be honest. Well, you know, uh, uh, let's do this. There we go. And these touch events are me in itself. <sighs> Last set is gonna be let's say they share definitions. Mass content is not the same as content, so I can scan another different variable. So, oh well. If capabilities dot has game type equals game type dot none. This else is touch standard touch folder. We also want to make sure this playlist is running no matter what. This is for touch end purposes only. And the capabilities of touch and stripe equals touch and stripe, but none. Our scroller is actually going to be equaling to a new, a simple scroller. I think I only need mass content. Not too worried about scroll using or anything else, slaughter effects or anything like that. So, mass content is going to be a container because we're already finding that. Now, the difference is going to be though. Instead of adding container, I add the scroller to the stage. Okay, so the scroller is now a regular movie clip and not just an actionable. It's like that, okay. Um, First, with the order of operation of the part matters. No, it's content. Okay, orientation is cool. How do you set the orientation here actually? So let me automatically add the reference. Hmm, anyway. East type easing strong. Duration, hold area, stick, touch, good, good. Wait, this is not the right one. There it is. This is actually not built in the right way. Oh, come on, buddy. Copy pasta. I never have more than one class file open of the same type that are projects. Always leads to bad things. Now that needs banks. So inside of our scroll content, we have the mass set, we have child scroller. They're so fun. Mm. Yeah, you should talk more it's code to get used to that. So as I remove the item. Well, 
believe that's good. Don't quote me on it, but I believe that it's good because we're already defining we're all adding to the scroller. We have mass content equal to that. But I will have to check on that to see if that's correct. If not, I think I'll have to follow instructions or dig up the old code that I use for it because scroll is just not fun. <sighs> Alright, scroll it again, move end. The atom checks out. Because we're still adding the container. Index it properly. Move item fork out, okay. And we, we just made a multi touch scroller, supposedly, but we don't want to put ourselves in that again because messy things happen. That's what testing is for, because this isn't even testing yet, so we're good. Now, Screw the ability to do that here. We're going to actually just make a new scroller. And that scroll content determine whether or not to make a touch scroller or mouse scroller. Perfect, right? Even though we're calling touch scroller. Scroller equals new scroll content past the stage. And we're going to do orientation dot vertical, which is set to default. So I'm, I mean, this, this is for future references that I decided to change it. Now, do I add this to the stage? Yes, because it's a loop clip. Good on that. So, for the far action string in actions, we're going to make a text action element that those elements that we were talking about in the there in the flash bin and text is going to be simple, so it's the action. Amazing, right? And then we're going to also type in a nice little return vector, which is going to be a vector of text action. And we return back push, oops. Uh oh. it a bit fast here. So we turn back dot push text act. Amazing. Now we're gonna return our return vex because at that point it made all the items. We're actually also going to go scroller dot add item text action. And we want to also maybe pass in an argument find spacing, but that actually gives the backend services control. Uh, so maybe not. So we have a little neat ability inside the scroller itself to do on that find spacing. So scroller that spacing is gonna be equal to well maybe I want to say 30 pixels. Is really good, and I'll change that at will later. Um, uh, now after we display this, we maybe want to make it so that if it's uh, just you know one or two items, don't start from the top of the page and have two buttons just laying on the top there, so we want to make sure it's centered. So to do that, we're going to set the scrollers y position equal to the stage 
dot stage height minus scroller's height. Divided by two. Perfect, right? Amazing. Now, scroller dot y. Also, you really want to adjust this if it's less than that. So, like, if scroller dot height is actually less than stage dot stage height. And also, we want to default you at the position of the menu. Which honestly, your height is 110. I'm just be a static of 110. I'm not even going to make a thing for it. So we'll just have that noted there. And we're not gonna use that variable again, so we can go to that it's good. Yeah, so those links actually just say that. Uh I think we're good. Let me check when compile errors. Oh, first let me add the definitions to the project. This was best to the project. Desktop sample source amazing right select folder realistically this actually needs to be in source pass also going to go there go back mm. was it after to touch for the structure of the scroller content, we're looking at so as it scroller. Set here, set here, good, good to go, good to go, good to go. Next is going to be saving the project and trying to test it. Of course, nothing will happen yet because I'm even calling it, but I want to make sure it's been right. Good. Now we're going to actually call the actual select panel and put it on the stage and see what happens. This has a test set. Pass it to stage from main and add child at the select. And let's see what that could cause. Already we get a saying that it's in namespace public, so I actually want to change the definition from stage to just add an extra E there with the work of that. Set, verify, let's go. 
Alright, so yeah, we can't name it the exact same thing as something Flash hard to find when it was initializing error, flash, or whatever. So we just add another E2 and we're good. Probably namespace means that. Now, scroll content is. Here, but I believe me to package source. We can add it. Is what it is. Next, scroll out one eighty three. Uh, you're not defined, and it's pretty bad. This is also not supposed to happen here, considering it's supposed to be an all type anyway. But I can't find the scroll inputs a touch, so I need to. Why would I want claw on one though? There it is. Let's see where you're stored here. If I open up the news bank project real quick, documents news bank. Open this up real quick. Project I love learning from your previous things and properties. GitHub, ClassPass, references, GitHub. Oh man, you already have it automatically set, don't you? Blah. But I know what to do there. Open recent. It's been cool. Wait for it to open up. All right, and we decide to identify your scroller content as path of terminal for the synchronous operation. Libs abstract controller. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and use that over here. Okay, thanks. How was that one? Alright. Now right simple scroll one side action select can be found. Let's open back up my other points. Wait, final piece of progress. That's really convenient. Well, action slides line for break simple scroll could not be found. Why am I using it here? Cool, you found it. Where did you find it at? Just 
this Atrix control, oh, cause there goes the desktop controller. It's my bad again. All right, so open up. Uh, documents, GitHub. I need to organize this a bit. My Flash Labs. That bill. Libs, desktop scroller, sample, and source. Alright. Now, text is not defined inside text action line 16. Text action is defined as. We're on the home stretch. Hey, open up. You're right here. Uh, what's up with you? Access undefined property text in the CSC inside text action. Inside the clip with tensor, we clip. And we have the thing bound properly so that text action is in UI elements text action. Ooh. Now we find, okay. Problem solution. Source UI elements. Try that one. What? Oh. Everything got all shifted to one, so it's kind of like, what's, what's there, where's everything now? All the right paths sometimes, and may like to be like, what the fuck? Sometimes, so I'm just gonna correct these and hope that it works. She gets it. Once I got it for one, Incorrect, buddy. This is reopening you up again. I'm going to report you as an issue to your inmate. Storage. It's going to be the file that we want. I'm going really slow because it's 4.1 a.m. It's not found. You know the transaction source UI elements inside here is correct. Okay, you're fine if I type you in. Great. Amazing. Copy set. Auto display set. Great. Uh, the solution for simple score. What was the solution of this? It was a. There's a library somewhere. Why are you even referenced here? Does anyone use you here? Let me, let me just delete you. I want to see what happens. Sure. Great, so it starts up. Now let me let me actually just comment this out. By control F C so it doesn't look like it's defined at all. I don't know why it's here. Minus three capital C, and that's gonna bring up everything, of course. But there's no variable to find. It would be that, right? Colon C, because it would be a type of C. 
not even in there. Okay, interesting. Whatever. So we're good, and we added it, and it's on the stage, but obviously nothing's there. So what I'm going to tell it to do is action selects dots. Display actions. Let me make a new vector real quick. to display dot push login and we're gonna do action set display push uh sign up Perfect, right and then we're gonna pass this as an argument and it should display it for us so let's go ahead and test it out Looks like we got something here. Looks like it's two ailments, but it looks really constrained at the moment. That means we have to kind of set our bounds properly. So, in our scroller... Let's not even do that part. Let me see what happens there. So we're defining a mouse concept, but I don't think we need one at this time. Oh, we do. I need to set this bounds. Properly. So let me go ahead and do that inside of uh, what's this mean? Let's make out here real quick. Inside of actions to display. So that action selects. I'm gonna make the scroller bounds equal to stage e dot with. And stage that stage heights. Oh look, I'm working to get minus one then. Great, right. amazing. All right, now we have it added, and now it's good to go. Let's try that. Oh, we can't set this bounds app. Okay, hold on. That's that's the thing. Uh, we need to actually add the items first. That's a little bit of weird position to put it, but I'll do that just fine there. Awesome, so we're almost there. We have it displaying there properly, uh, and it's kind of cut off from the top there. Uh, we're, what we're going to want to do is send this bad boy. So, in order to center it, it's quite simple. Actually, how do I do this? That's a good question. Considering that I'm adding it as x0, y0, I want to add them actually at the... I need to actually set their exposition to the center of the stage manually, so that's what do it. So, text action dot x is going to be equal to stage dot stage with minus the text action dot with. And again, divide that by two to get the spacing between the front or the left and the right of it. And let's try it. Oh, it didn't work. Awesome. 
So we know that it doesn't work. Next text action dot width. Text action dot width to find the structure set properly. Add item successfully. Text action X. Verify text action X is not being modified. Probably is. That'd be it. I mean, yeah, so, okay, that's why, because it's being set to zero. Inside of there, school content. I can do one of two things. I can change it here and kill that reference. I can return X as long as it's horizontal, disable the functionality of it. Or I can actually move the scroller itself and be good. So let's do that. It's kind of a more proper way to do things. So I still want to do handle positions and everything. Now let's go ahead and. So we're at child scroller content. I'm going to set scroller dot x equal to you get a bunch of uh, disgusting things there oh uh, you know what here's what we'll do we'll make this here and this isn't this isn't even needed unless it's that so i'm gonna make it so that if it's vertical we're only changing its y and if it's horizontal or changing its X. That will solve the problems. And that will keep the X value since it's a vertical reference that we're referencing instead of action slides. So, test it again. And we're good. Now, I want to fix this kind of. It, it, it's. Is it doing that? It's a hairline reference. Because I believe it's cutting off that top bit there. That's what's making me a little bit angry. So, this is to, because of the fact that that line is not counted as an actual element of it. So, I'm just going to move this down about 3 pixels, 5 pixels. Oops, I mean the entire thing. And it'll be good there. Now, let's test it out. Alright, well, we're good. So essentially we just ended back where we were, but we were able to place this dynamically. So for instance, if I want to add something like login, sign up, uh, let's let's change the scene. So you might want a might want a username field, you might want a password field, and we would have the ability to identify it and retype password. Oops, this is what's end. And we would also maybe have something like uh, choose membership. And this is what we can just say this. Actually, let's do it like that. Or retype password. And maybe an email address field. We go here. We can hit control enter. And it'll just automatically render this for us. So it provides some sort of useful functionality in the future for like many options of the like. And then the example will be if, and this is this is not me finalizing the script here, this is going to be the, the background service will do. So if I want to, for instance, do something like a uh, menu action of, uh, it would be interesting actually to change this to dynamic test field, so I might need to do something different there, but that's fine. Um, yeah, I need to make a form element actually, I need to do that in a bit, but for now, if I were to tap on something, yeah, so for instance, when I click the plus button, there's an option of adding file. There's going to be an option of take a picture and take a video. 
And finally, there's going to be the option of... Mm. Really it, really. Consider that there. And this will actually display in this page. So I'm going to move the script over here. So say I click on that, be like, add a file, take a picture, take a video. It's going to be quite interesting seeing how this turns out in the future. It's just consistency. It's amazing. I, I actually wish I could have some sort of auto script to that for me, but man. So, amazingness. Add a file, take a picture, take a video. Now, I may want to make it so that there's a different controller type. So, if I want to make these editable fields like our previous example where it was email, password, root type, password, or using password, root type, password, inside the action select, maybe instead of a display actions feature, and this is always not going to be final product, just duplicating it. I need to reuse some functions here. That would be display input. Field names. I'm not, I don't even need it. I, in general, just would be field names and all that, and we would turn that. But we're not doing anything with that, so it's fine. But we would make it so that the text action. This is text input type. Oh, uh, mm. oh what, what is the property for it? Is it just type? Yeah, it equals text field type. It's a constant that inputs. So text stack, text field, where it access in the text field inside of text stack. We could make so in the info later, but if it was a type input, it would actually act as that. So if I make it a in our main script, username browser, root type browser to email, and I change that to display display actions to display input. Da, 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 da. Ignoring variable names for sense making. We get. Oh, also, not sure to need to be seen. Okay, so there's a few things I have to do here. I did define that, and actually, accessing that was improper in the first place, so I shouldn't be accessing stuff inside of it like that. First practices. So, we're going to make it so that text act has a sort of type to it. Now let's just make it a boolean uh, input boolean false default to that and if input else no mouse children text act text type text field type input here, text action, we should, don't need to touch it ourselves. In a sense, it's something to find in the first place, but in the way, text is going to be equal to that, type is going to be that, and we're going to make it so that maybe when you tap on it, uh, click on it, something else happens. So, with that, need to be capable of using mouse and touch and all that, but I'll just have this to current example and write that in a bit later. So yeah, username, password, email, for, ooh, buddy, come on now. Text type, text will type input. Uh, okay, yeah, we're not defining it here. I can select. Select it true, because we're actually our using input. And now, we're starting to get passing in the parameter and just, just come on. Text action, equals new text action, text action. 
then we input equals false, but we change it to true. So if input text field text type equals text field type input, that is our text action. The selectables shouldn't make a difference. That's actually interesting. So if I maybe do that, that would be better. And I need to set it to default to false because I don't want this to be selected by default. So now it's selectable, so I just put password, da da da, username, blah blah blah, blah. but it, it just dynamically rendered, so it's, it's amazing. And I'll add extra uh, configuration options would be password, but I mean, I might need to make a formula specific to that, but you can, it's general just if it is, I can render whatever I want. So, finally, I guess for instance of sharing or instance of Let's do something like, uh, you know, the, we don't really have that many actions to play panel references from memory, but it, it is going to be a useful feature for moving forward. And this is not going to be accessible or the script is going to be basically for like the, uh, the service in the background. So next episode, when we talk about doing communicating with database and Firebase, which completely ruined my objectives in the beginning, but uh, we're, we're, we're going to get to those parts in the future. Just did not think it would take this long this part. But the work in progress is a work in progress, and it's good. And we're going to revert this to our last set. And maybe the picture. Add file. Take a picture. And take a video. I don't really think of anything else we can do. Let's give you guys simple sets at the moment. But yeah, we have our buttons defined, so they're all ready to go there. We have our search elements and our set references here. Oh, and oh, we need to just for probability sake. Even though it's sim, let's move back to the next episode. Uh, what was it? Display actions. Yep. Add a file, take a picture, take a video. And those are going to be passed over, and we get a return vector that we can add event lists to in the future. Tab this one, but. Alright. Well, we're gonna leave off with some here. I might do a little bit of streaming for a bit of gaming, so I think I'm gonna take a bit of a break. Probably one. But I will see you guys next time. I'm going to definitely work on David's communication after this and show you the guys just a new Firebase feature such as real time communication. So if I put a file in or make a registry, cloud functions can react, make an icon of it be good there so I'm not downloading all the images displaying stuff like that and I'm not having apps do it to get a bit extra storage mm -hmm. no because I would have to send it across platform send it everyone so mm, you know, have to do it itself wastes a bit of power takes upload bandwidth I wonder what would be more efficient running it all one language here, or one language there. I want control over it, so I guess it would be better for Firebase to do it. Okay. Alright, well, then that'll be it. And I will see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed it.